So how is it possible that we've seen a single floor plan, yet we could explore the whole building right away? To explain, let's see a short introduction of Graphisoft's virtual building concept, also known as Building Information Modeling, or BIM. Let's double-click on the first floor in the Stories section of the Navigator. Instantly, we get back to the initial floor plan. You can adjust the content to the floor plan window if it's necessary by clicking on the symbol Zoom, Fit in Window. One fundamental concept of BIM is that the 3D model is made of real building components like walls, beams, or slabs. Let's take a closer look at the ARCHICAD walls as an example. Let's double click on the wall tool in the toolbox. The dialog box for the wall settings appears. In the first section, we can specify the geometry of the wall including height and shape information, as well as its vertical position. In the second section, we can set how the wall will be represented in 2D view, such as the floor plan or a section. We can set the attributes of the wall, or rather its representative symbol, to control its display. Here, the structure of a composite wall or other view-dependent characteristics can be selected. In the next section, we can determine how the wall should look in 3D views. Surface materials and textures can be specified here. In the last section, we can link different properties that are necessary to build bills of material for this type of wall. In list type views, the wall behaves as a group of basic building components that forms this composite structure. The point is that the wall we either draw on the floor plan or place in 3D in a perspective view is not merely a 2D symbol or a collection of parallel lines or just a 3D shape. It's all that and much more. It's an environment-sensitive building block of the virtual building that knows how to present itself within the different aspects of architectural documentation. What does that mean in practice? Let's make some changes in our virtual building and see what happens. First of all, Let's change the current wall settings to this. Set the wall height to 13 feet 1 inch under geometry and positioning. For the composite type, which is going to be the representation of the composite wall structure on floor plans and sections, let's select the wall concrete stone tile structure. To do this, click on the composite button and from the appearing dialog, choose the required composite type. In the Model section, let's click on the little chain icon on the right. Click on Override Service button. The list of available surface materials comes up. Select Brick Stack Bond from the list. All three surface material settings, Wall Exterior, Interior and Edge, will be updated. After changing the settings, let's click on OK. Back on the floor plan, let's zoom into the wall on the right side of the lobby area and select the Inject Parameters tool from the standard toolbar. The cursor changes to a little syringe. This tool injects the current settings of the Active Design or Documentation tool to the existing elements. When we move the cursor above the wall we zoomed in on, the wall will be highlighted, showing that it's selected for the injection. Let's click anywhere inside the wall body. The wall changes instantly, showing the composite structure we selected in the wall dialog box. Now let's see what happened in other views of the virtual building. First, Let's select and double-click 4DD section from the section's elevations part of the navigator. The section opens instantly. On the right side of the lobby's first floor, we will see the wall we have just modified. It shows the structure we have just selected for it. Now, let's select Generic Axonometry, or General Perspective, from the navigator and select a view that shows that particular part of the project. As you can see, the wall now shows the surface material that has been set in the dialog box. 
One of the major advantages of the BIM concept is that non-graphical information, such as quantities, element inventories, and schedules, can be automatically extracted from the 3D model. Let's check if all aspects of the virtual building really are covered. Double-click Wall List in the Element Schedules section of the Navigator. Instantly, an interactive list appears of all the walls placed in the project so far. We can quickly find the wall on the first floor that we have just modified. Here, some parameters, like the height or the composite structure of the wall, can be changed again. These changes will be reflected in all views, including floor plans, sections, elevations, or 3D views. Let's get back to the initial floor plan again. Double-click first floor in the navigator. Zoom out in order to see the entire floor plan. Having a virtual building also means that we don't have to set up complicated layer sets for the different stories within the project. Stories, sections, and elevations are just separate views of the virtual building model. In ARCHICAD, the navigator window makes it easy to toggle between different views and representations of the BIM model. In the navigator, double-click on the different stories, and on the different sections in the sections elevations part or in the details part. All these views are merely derivatives of the virtual building. Any number of them can be generated, and they are all linked together. So if anything changes in one view, not only is that particular view modified, but the changes are also reflected in all the views throughout the entire project. This is a huge advantage compared to the traditional 2D drawing-based documentation method where coordination of the drawings had to be done manually. It's not just more productive, but also more reliable, as it reduces the risk of coordination issues to the minimum. Let's see how we can work within the different views linked to each other. The revolutionary virtual trace technology in ARCHICAD allows you to see and compare two different views of the BIM model. Return to the floor plan view of the first floor. Right-click on 6 East Elevation in the Navigator and choose Show as Trace Reference from the context menu. The elevation appears on the referred side of the building floor plan. The Trace icon becomes active in the standard toolbar. Click on the small arrow next to the trace icon and choose Drag Reference from the menu. Drag the elevation view to the right. Arrange the floor plan so that the windows on the first floor of the building become clearly visible next to the floor plan view. Now zoom in at the right side to have a closer look on the windows. Select one of the windows on the floor plan. Change its size to 7 feet by 11 feet in the info box. Click on the Rebuild Reference command in the Trace menu. Now you can see how the elevation follows the changes. Now select Switch Reference with Active command in the Trace menu. As you can see, the layout changes automatically according to the active view. Zoom into the area of the modified view. Select it on the elevation view and reset the size to 5 feet by 8 feet. Choose the Switch Reference with Active command again to return to the floor plan. Press the Escape button to deselect the window, and finally switch off the Trace button.